Hey guys, I'm doing a video today because I got a question a few days ago about you know what rigs I use, knot, leader, swivels, basically all the details of rigs, and uh, it was going to be a pretty lengthy reply, so I basically opted to do a video instead, and uh, it'll be a good reference in the future as well for any other questions that people might have that they can come back to and watch this video. Um, one quick thing is it's probably going to be a pretty lengthy video so I'm going to put uh, some little um, times over here on the side or over here on this side actually um, to skip to if you just want to see about the hooks or leader or swivels or basically at the end of the video I'm going to go through um, the rig I'm going to tie a rig up and if you want to skip to see that specifically you can do that so all the times are over here right now so just go down and click what time you want to go to to see that part otherwise you can watch the whole video up to you so anyway let's get into it so the rig that I use all the time my favorite rig probably if I had to pick one would be the fish finder rig or Carolina rig um, but basically consists of a swivel um, plastic bead well no this ain't a swivel this is a sinker like an egg sinker pyramid sinker some type of sinker plastic bead swivel uh, a length of leader and then a hook I use circle hooks so that's what I got tied on here we'll get to that in the hook section so basically what you're gonna need to tie a fish finder rig which is a pretty simple rig so you're not gonna need that much so first off you're gonna need a sinker so the sinker is gonna be uh, varying sizes and that's one of the things too about fish finder rig is you can change the size of the sinker for current depth um, any kind of thing that you're doing and you can use different types but I use egg sinkers this is like an ounce and a half egg sinker um, pro I use it a lot on you know my you know medium size inshore rods and then uh, so that's egg sinker next up you're gonna need a bead now um, I just get like a plain red plastic bead and one main thing about the beads so you can buy the beads at your sporting goods store and stuff like that uh, around like the rig or terminal tackle section and stuff like that um, however it's more expensive because they only sell you like 50 pieces or something like that and um, so I go to a craft store like Michaels, Joann's and stuff like that and they sell like bulk beads for making necklaces and jewelry and stuff like that. And I think last time I went, I think I got like five, a pack of 500 beads and uh, I do not know how long it's gonna last me. It's gonna be a very long time and uh, I hope to go through them at some point but that means I'm gonna get broke off a lot so maybe not, maybe I don't wanna go through them at all. So it's a lot cheaper that way to get a lot more of them like that. So moving on and then swivels, next up swivels. So I like Spro swivels. I think they're very quality swivels. Um, made in Japan, uh, strength to size ratio is very good. They, ha they make, you know, really strong swivels for the size. So if you want to be stealthy, go with some Spro swivels, but it's really up to you. Um, if you have swivels that you like to use, use your own swivels. Now, leader. So, I use fluorocarbon. I don't know if it's better. Uh, I, you know, I fish dirty water a lot of times, and I don't know if it matters that much, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that was like, if it catches me another fish, maybe I'll use it, so I only use fluorocarbon. I do like the abrasion resistance, though, because it's a harder line. However, one thing you have to think about too is the line is stiffer. Fluorocarbon is a lot stiff, stiffer than monofilament. So if you're using live bait, like live finger mullet, um, pinfish, and stuff like that that's swimming around, it's going to you know, inhibit the action a little bit if the fish is swimming around against a stiffer line. So you, know, you be the judge, use what you're comfortable with. The leader material, you know, it's up to you. However, size-wise, I use like, mostly I use 20 pound. This is 20 pound vanish. Um, and then I have 30 pound, uh, 50 pound, I even have some 80 pound. Um, and basically use that basically on size fish you're after, 
how many teeth they have, you know, if they're really great, like tarpon and stuff like that, you want to use a thicker leader because otherwise they're going to wear through it pretty fast. Um, so that's what I use, mostly 20 pound. And one thing too about this 20 pound leader, so this is a um, 250 yard spool. This is like people are buying this to put on their bait casters and stuff for bass fishing. And one thing is, is these are leader spools. They sell these as well and they have 20 pound in these. The only difference is the 20 pound that you can get on this is like, you know, a little bit thicker average diameter, which gives you more abrasion resist resistance and stuff like that. However, I think you only get like 50 yards of it on one of these. I'm getting 250 yards on one of these, which is 20 pound test rated um, and it's like a couple dollars more so you can get five times more on one of these you know or five times what you would get on one of these leader spools for a couple dollars more it's a better way to buy it so and then going on to the hooks one of the more important parts I guess um, I use circle hooks reduces gut hook rate you know gut hooking fish because I, I catch and release a lot so I'm about that also too I use inline circle hooks they're not offset um, you can see on the, all the stickers, uh, surprise, I uh, use owner hooks. Um, it says tournament legal because they're inline circle hooks. And basically I have a variety. So right here I have size two, size one, and one odd. Um, size hooks, I use the size hooks for how big the bait is. If you wanted to get one size, one knot will get you through just about any inshore fishing for slot size redfish, spotted sea trout, flounder, uh, mangrove snapper, a lot of different sheep's head, a lot of different species. And I use one knot mostly. But um, if you want to get in more details, uh, match the size hook to the bait. So if you're using finger mullet and stuff like that, use a smaller hook. You use an eight inch mullet, hog leg mullet, use a bigger hook. Um, and shrimp and everything else you match the size of the bait to the size of the hook um, and then that's about it I'll basically go into the so next I'm gonna go into the knot that I tie so I use like the tri lane or tri lane knot clinch knot or something like that a few like two variations of it and that's like the knot I use mostly unless I'm tying a loop knot but that's another another story altogether so uh, let's get into that and I'll show you on a bigger scale and then we'll go go uh, to tying the rig all right guys this is a quick explanation of my favorite knot to tie which is a uh, trilene clinch knot or whatever i already said earlier um but basically i'm going to show you on a bigger scale and then i'll show you again later when i'm tying the rig so imagine this is the hook eye or swivel or whatever else lure that you're tying it to so you're going to take this and here's your line um this is just the basic one uh so you pass it through one time like this then you go down and you just add turns so more turns for the smaller the, the smaller the line so this is obviously very thick line so i did about um four or five twists there and then you pass it you didn't see that earlier you pass it through right here and then you cinch it down and there you go so that that'll get you through just about anything however using braid and stuff like that I use a different variation and I'll show you that in here in a second however this will work for you know thicker leaders and stuff like that because it's not gonna slip smaller smoother lines you're gonna have to do the the next knot that I'm gonna show you right here so the next knot which I guess you can call it a um, double loop or improved trialing improved clinch or something like that basically you do same thing however you go through again to make a loop like this like that and then you do your twist so one two three four pass it through both the the whole loop you made and then you cinch it down like that and then there you go and now this is good for tying the braided line because it's not going to slip or smaller um, like smooth casting lines and stuff like that this is a better line for that I use it for braid that 
um, braid and smaller lines. But there you go, there's the improved trilinear clinch knot. So, um, I guess we'll move on to the rig now. All right, guys, so I got everything right here that I need to make my fish finder rig. I got my sinker, my plastic bead, my swivel, uh, my length of leader, and my hook and also my main line to tie it to. So also uh, on the length of the leader, cause I didn't address it earlier. You basically want to have, you know, I usually use between, I don't know, 18 to 24 inches or something like that. Basically you want to use the length of leader um, to, I guess in clearer water, you want to use a longer leader or around spooky fish, you want to use a longer leader. Um, but for, you know, my purposes I usually use between 18 and 24 inches. So basically you're going to take the egg sinker and put it on your main line like that. Then you're going to, it's going to try to roll away. You're going to take your plastic bead. This is to, plastic bead basically protects your knot um, from the egg sinker because it will, um, fray your line a little bit then you're going to take swivel and on this knot I'm going to tie an improved clinch or trialing knot which does the double loop because this is braid and uh, it will slip if I just do a, a regular trialing knot um, don't ask me how I know that <laughs> so do you know basically the more twists for the small little line. So this is 20 pound braid, so it's like six pound diameter. So um, I did about, I don't know, like seven or eight twists on that. Basically, and you test it, you tighten it down, it cinched down and it's tight. And then, so that's it. That's the one half of the rig basically. And then you're gonna take the leader and the leader just from trial and error, I know that I can tie it um, with just a regular trialing knot. And some people might say, well, why don't you just tie the improved, you know, knot for everything? Well, yeah, I could do that and I've done it before. However, that extra step of looping, about, looping it back through again adds just a little bit more time. One, two, one thing too, you want to either put spit or water down uh, right here when you cinch it down because fluorocarbon in especially is so hard when you go to cinch it down that actually that actual cinching will fray the line itself so you want to make sure I didn't do it on the last one because I forgot but you want to make sure here I'll do it on this one and I'm doing like five or six turns you'll get to know like how many turns you need um, as you tie it on different size lines. Um, so I'll put some spit on it like that and then cinch it down and it slides a lot easier. And you can also use your finger like that to help it slide down basically to get it cinched. Test it, it's tight. So then you're gonna trim your tag ends like that. Make it all look pretty. And then last one. There you go. So there you go. There's your fish finder rig. You're ready to go um, catch just about anything. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked that rig tutorial and stuff like that and all the details that I, I tried to give as much as I could. However, I didn't want to make the video too long, which I feel like I already made it too long, but who knows? Uh, if you like the video, uh, let me know. And uh, if you have any other questions about other rigs that I use, let me know and I'll try to make a video of those. Um, but I enjoyed making this video. I like showing, you know, stuff that I've learned over the years, uh, even though you know, I haven't been fishing terribly long, um, but to help other people catch more fish. And uh, that's what it's all about is getting out there and enjoying, you know, scenery, catching fish and stuff like that, and having a lot of fun doing it. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. And, uh, Later.